What is going on guys? Welcome back to another BuzzFeed test. Now I am thrilled to see that you guys took full advantage of this week's poll being on my community tab on my YouTube channel. Over 50,000 of you voted on it and 50% of you voted for Rie's favorite Japanese recipes. What I'm not so thrilled about is the fact that this video has six different recipes. So if I were to redo all six of them, I'd be here all week. As a result, I picked out three recipes. I'm gonna do the tebasaki fried chicken, the beef udon noodles, and the roll cake at the end. A nice three course Japanese meal, if you wish. But first, we have to go on a little bit of an Amazon shopping spree. So, I bought some udon noodles. I don't need eight pounds of them, but I have them now. I was not about to try to make some homemade ones like in the hand-pulled noodle video. I still have nightmares about that. But also, I bought stuff like this mirin, which is apparently like a rice flavoring. It's not an oil. I'm not sure what it is, but we have it. Some of this dashi broth base, I'm assuming this is just like a, a chicken or a beef stock base, so we got that. And some potato starch, which we are going to coat our chicken in, which apparently makes this fried chicken even better than American versions. And now that we have our hands on everything we're going to need to make all three of the recipes I picked out, let's get right into it. For the first of three recipes, our appetizer, we're going to be starting with this tebasaki Japanese fried chicken. And for that I grabbed some full chicken wings, some of that mirin, our bag of potato starch and soy sauce, some salt and pepper, fresh garlic, a little bit of sugar, sake, and sesame seeds. I also forgot to mention that all of the ingredients that I bought online and in stores for these three recipes cost me well over $100, so let's pray that this video doesn't get demonetized like 30 other videos just did. If the person at YouTube or whoever it was that demonetized all my videos is watching right now, hi, hello, my name's David, <laughs> I'm sorry for whatever I did, stop demonetizing me. Anyways, first we are going to prep our chicken wings and for that I basically spread them out on a cookie sheet. I sprinkled some salt and pepper on all of them. I just like to address how mammoth sized some of these wings are. I don't know if these are from chickens or T-Rexes. I guess us Americans just love growth hormones pumped into our poultry. <laughs> um, but then I just coated all of them in that potato starch. Shook off any of the excess and then began to start frying. This is going to be fried in two different stages. The first at 320 degrees for 7 to 8 minutes. This just ensures that the chicken is cooked all the way through without drying it out. Um, but once I took them all out, I raised the temperature to 350 and then gave them another 3 minutes to crisp up on the outside and get that nice golden brown color. I pulled them all out and let them cool on this rack, let some of that extra oil drip off as well while I prepared the sauce. Into my saucepan I added in some soy sauce and some mirin, sake and sugar along with a clove of fresh garlic and I let that all come to a simmer. I allowed it to thicken up a little bit before throwing in my first batch of wings. You do want this sauce kind of sort of thick so it sticks to the wings pretty well. The first few I put in there wasn't really reduced enough, but eventually it got there and I got some good looking wings. I plated them up, threw some sesame seeds on there to finish them, and recipe number one of three is complete. Up second today is our udon noodles. Once again, super relieved. I don't have to try to make these homemade. But for them I grabbed that giant box of udon noodles, sake and soy sauce, some scallions, more of that mirin, our dashi broth base, an onion, some sugar, a little bit of water, salt, and this skirt steak, which I'm gonna slice pretty thinly. And of course first I have to do everyone's favorite, all of the prep work. I chopped up my onion in some shoestrings. I also had to get some thin slices of this steak. I'm sure all you steak connoisseurs out there are gonna be mad at me for <laughs> trying to remove some of this fat, but I think it'll be a little overkill, especially because we're not going to be able to render most of this off. Um, so I got some thin slices of that, tried not to slice my hand off. 
And you need 200 grams of this at the end. Thank God for my kitchen scale, because I have no idea how much that would be. And now we can start cooking this stuff. In a pan, I threw down a little bit of oil. I allowed it to heat up and then tossed in my onion. As much as I love cooking and making these videos for you guys, it does get pretty interesting when your house constantly smells of a hibachi restaurant or a Five Guys or something like that. Especially at like one or two in the morning when my poor parents are trying to sleep and all they smell is food. <laughs> uh, but once I had my onions and steak sauteed lightly together, I added in some soy sauce and mirin. Sake, sugar, and water. Complete side note. I don't know what two means. All it says is some Japanese figures and the number two. I don't know. So I'm assuming that means two tablespoons. That's kind of what it looks like to me. But I basically just gave that all a mix and I'm gonna let that simmer away while I prepare everything else for this. Now on to our dashi broth. The majority of this bottle is in Japanese. I have absolutely no idea how much water goes with how much of this uh, soup base. So I just took a wild guess. To that I added in more soy sauce, mirin, sugar, and salt. You guys get the gist by now. And that's pretty much it for the broth that we're gonna use. So the last thing we have to do is cook our udon noodles. The packages came with three like clusters of pasta. So I cooked two of them. I'm hoping that's gonna be enough. And once they were done, I strained them out and it is time to combine all of this together. In my bowl, I threw down some of my udon noodles and a few ladles worth of that broth just to cover. Some of our delicious smelling beef and onions and just some chopped scallions and that's pretty much it. But we do have to set that off to the side for a little bit longer while we finish our third recipe. This Japanese rolled cake, which is very similar to the Neapolitan Swiss roll that I've done. So I'm hoping this isn't gonna give us too much of a hassle. Um, but to make it, you're gonna need to grab some oil and heavy cream, some powdered sugar, some normal sugar and flour, a couple of eggs, some milk, and then some strawberries and bananas to put in the middle. And step number one is to whip together four egg yolks and some sugar once again. All of this is in grams or milliliters or some foreign measurement I'm not used to. So uh, thank God for my scale and a couple of measuring cups I had that had that. Now I know how everybody from any other country in the world feels when they watch videos with cups and tablespoons and stuff like that. I'm noticing this isn't a ton of batter, but we only need a very thin layer of cake to roll up, so hopefully it'll work. I also whipped up four egg whites with a little bit of sugar. We're gonna eventually fold this into the cake batter we just made, so you want it some firm peaks just about here, and I began to mix that into the original batter. In the video, they used a whisk for the majority of this, so that's what I used too. And then the last little bit, they folded in with a spatula, hopefully to keep some of the air in the egg whites that we just worked so hard for. And this is looking just about perfect. So I poured it out onto my cookie sheet with some parchment paper and a little bit of cooking spray just to double ensure this doesn't stick to anything. And I let that bake for about 12 minutes. In the meantime, we're gonna make our whipped cream. A little bit of heavy cream and some powdered sugar, surprisingly, in this. And again, this is looking perfectly delicious and spreadable. So I pulled my cake out, I let it cool for a very long time. While it was cooling, I chopped up some strawberries and bananas into some longer pieces to put in the middle. And thank God, eight or nine hours of cooking later, we are in the home stretch. I first spread on my whipped cream onto the cake and then layered a few lines of fruit. I tried to roll this up and it wasn't going the best. A lot of the whipped cream wanted to creep out. I couldn't really get the cylinder shape they had. It was more like a sandwich. It's a little bit flatter, but I got a slice of it and it should taste just as good. So finally, all three of our recipes are done and now we can give all of them a try. The smell coming off of these right now is so amazing. You can kind of tell like which ones got the sauce when it was more reduced than some earlier ones, but I'm sure they'll all be so good. This might be 
the best chicken wing I've ever eaten in my entire lifetime. The meat is like fall off the bone tender. The outside is super crispy, but that sauce, I've never tasted anything like that. That is amazing. It's like super sweet, but still salty from the soy sauce. And it's like, oh my God, it's so good. Absolutely, no doubt, 100 out of 10. Wow, what a start. Now the only real major difference I notice is that their noodles are like three times the thickness of mine. Um, it's probably just a different type of udon. I don't know. <laughs> Let's try this broth first though. That's really good. Good start. How about some of our delicious homemade packaged <laughs> udon? I really like those. I might like udon better than ramen, to be honest. There's like a different type of flavor with it. How about some of this beef and onion mixture? I don't love the beef. There's a very weird like overkill of sweetness. I think it's because onions have a natural sweetness to them and then we added a ton of sugar. Or two doesn't mean two tablespoons of everything. It could mean something else. The udon and the broth though is a home run. So I'll give this like a, like an eight. Definitely better than ramen though. You guys should try this. Well, this turned out slightly flatter than I envisioned. Uh, it looks kind of good, I guess. And the flavor should be there. It's super light, not overly sweet. I did notice with the uh, jiggly cheesecake as well though, it's very eggy. Like the cake is heavily egg based, so you get a little bit of like scrambled egg flavor, but it's, it's not too overpowering, it's all right. It was super simple, even easier than the Neapolitan one. Um, and it tastes fine, so I'll give it like a seven and a half out of 10. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's BuzzFeed test. If you did, leave me a big like. Thank you all for voting. Um, I don't know how long this video is going to be. I'm assuming very long. So if it's 20 minutes, I'm sorry. Follow me over on Twitter, on Instagram, all that good stuff. And I will see you right back here next time. 